The scientists started by generating a beam of protons, which they accelerated around CERN's proton synchrotron. The proton beam was then passed into the super proton synchrotron to accelerate them even further. The resulting high energy beam of protons was slammed into a graphite target. This produced a cocktail of exotic subatomic particles, including neutrinos, which then flew off through the Earth in the direction of Gran Sasso. The 730 kilometer journey took them 2.4 milliseconds. They come from that direction. I mean, Geneva is in that direction. Several billions of neutrinos are produced every day at the CERN accelerators. They go through the Earth's crust and they reach the opera detector. Even with billions of neutrinos streaming into the laboratory, detecting them still wasn't easy. The key was the huge detector at the heart of the Grand Sasso lab. It's made from 150,000 bricks of lead and weighs four and a half thousand tons. Lead is particularly dense, which increases the chances of a neutrino encountering a nucleus. As the neutrinos smashed into the lead nucleus, they created charged particles, which are detected as tiny flashes of light. So you can see that with opera, it's, it's a waiting game. You fire a neutrino beam and you wait and you just count as many of these interactions as you can. The process generated about 30 flashes of light a day and provided a chance to test more than just the type of neutrino arriving. The nice thing about this experiment is, although it was really set up to study the behavior of neutrinos in a very fundamental sense and the different types of neutrinos that you have and how they might change into each other, is that you can also study more basic properties of them. And what OPERA decided they could measure was the speed at which neutrinos travel. And that's quite an easy thing in principle to measure because you know a distance, you know where neutrinos were produced, you know where you're finding them, and you know how long they took to get there if you have a clock where you produced it in a clock in your experiment where you made the measurement. That's speed. Speed is just the distance covered in a certain amount of time. Nobody had anticipated what happened when they started measuring how long it took the neutrinos to arrive. They seem to arrive early. Earlier than the laws of physics allow. 60 billionths of a second or 60 nanoseconds sooner than a beam of light would if it were to cover the same distance. That meant that the neutrinos had traveled at just over two thousandths of one percent faster than the speed of light. Now, if I was on the motorway, I wouldn't expect to get into trouble for exceeding the speed limit by that small amount, but not in physics. The thing about an absolute speed limit is that it's absolute. It can't be exceeded in any circumstances by however small an amount. Under our current understanding of the universe, this just isn't possible. The researchers themselves were pretty shocked by the results. They spent many months looking for mistakes. They brought in outside experts. They pored over the figures hundreds of times, searching for an error. They even made sure they'd factored the movement of the continents that changes the distance between Italy and Switzerland by small amounts. But they couldn't find any mistakes. So they decided to publish. When the news broke, it caused a sensation. But Einstein's theory that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light is being challenged by science. The measurements could be wrong, or there's some unknown they factor They seem to be travelling faster than the speed of light. For physicists, this is, this is earth-shaking if it's true. It has created a huge furore, basically because if it was true, then, then it would be so, so astonishing and, and important. If the velocity of light turned out not to be absolute, we just have to tear up all the textbooks and start all over again. For me, it would mean the direction of my own research was wrong. So it would be a revolution, but to me, it would also mean that, that nature is just playing tricks with us. On the other hand, it would be nice if it were true.